Welcome back to another Vikings reaction. We're on season one, episode seven today. This one is titled Sacrifice. Now, the last episode was absolutely brilliant. I loved it. By the end of it, King Ada was, um, let's just say he wasn't too happy. <laughs> he wasn't too happy about Ragnar and the Vikings going away with £2,000, which is a bloody lot. There'll be major problems next time they arrive. Just going by what King Ada said at the end of the last episode, um, yeah, he's super pissed. Now, the stuff between Rolo and Floki, I'm guessing that's not going to be over. Um, they nearly went at it in the last episode. And, uh, yeah, I'm kind of worried for Floki now. Because Rolo is ruthless. We know how strong he is. Floki's a funny guy and stuff, but in a fight, I don't see him beating Rolo. Rolo's a tough son of a bitch. And, yeah, I hope that doesn't they don't come to blows. But Floki's annoyed at him for becoming a Christian in the last episode. Under the name of Rolf. Which um I found funny because out of all the all the Vikings, all the captains we've met so far, Rolo's the person I would least expect to to do that and be named Rolf, you know. Um But he was. And he said it was a joke, but Floki is annoyed at him and says that, you know, you're treating this like a joke, you're you've angered the gods. Odin's not gonna be happy with you and all of that. So yeah, I'm guessing that's not over. King Ayla was super pissed at the end of the last episode. Ragnar and the Vikings have just walked into this country and they've taken what they want. Everything has been on Ragnar's terms. The £2,000, he took King Ada's brother, he ended up killing him. But to be fair, I mean, King Ada sent men to uh, take out the Vikings. I guess he was like, you know what? £2,000 is a lot. They have my brother. And yeah, patience ran out and he sent men to kill him. But the Vikings, any challenge that's in front of them, they conquer. They have, a, they have a plan for everything. Ragnar has this plan for everything, doesn't he? He's, uh, like I've always said, always thinking ahead. Ragnar and the Vikings had this trap set up just in case King Ayla would uh, send men to attack with horses, and yeah, look what happened. Vikings won, and in return, Ragnar killed his brother, sent him back as a sign, and I guess King Ayla thought, you know, we have no choice. We're going to have to give them £2,000 now. And they've they've got it. But he's pissed. He's super pissed. So when the Vikings do return, yes, they'll be held to pay. And some shit will go down. It won't be as easy for Ragnar. Um, he's got this confidence about him, right? He's super confident and stuff. But something really bad's going to happen on their next visit because it's going a bit too well right now. Um, they're conquering and stuff. But yeah, King Ayla, he swears by it. And that last scene, yeah, you could tell he meant it. Something's coming. When the Vikings return, something's going to happen. This episode, well, there'll be a lot in Scandinavia. And I'm guessing there will be a lot to do in this episode with Ragnar and Lagatha losing their child. But, you know, maybe there'll be some stuff with the gods. Looking forward to this one. Of course, the big thing going into this episode is Ragnar finding out that Lagatha has lost the baby. But other than that, yeah, I'm not sure what else we're going to see. I think England, the stuff of England will be on hold for now. I think the last episode leaving us with King Ayla is kind of a to be continued for the stuff in England. Right now, we're going to be focusing on Scandinavia and Ragnar, Lagatha like losing the baby. More stuff there. Rolo and Floki, maybe. You know, it leaves King Ayla to come up with some plan. Or he's going to come up with something. So next time they return, you're probably going to think, oh, it's going to be easy. Ragnar's done this before. He's going to go in and take what he wants and he'll make a deal when no one can stop them. But yeah, I feel like it's going to be major problems. Um, so that's worrying. But in the meantime, I guess we're going to see what's going on in Scandinavia. See how Ragnar, Legafar, you know, how they're going to handle with what's happened. So those are my quick thoughts going into this episode. This is season one, episode seven of Vikings titled Sacrifice. Let's get into it. Oh, shit. Apple stands looking a bit different. Got that facial hair. Every nine years, we travel to the temple at Uppsala to give thanks to the gods and to offer them sacrifices for all they do for us. This year, I was not going to go, for there is too much to do around here. Then my unborn son was cruelly taken from me. It made me wonder what I had done to anger the gods. I've decided to go. I'm going to take the children for the first time. For it's important that they go. Will you come with us? I would have taken you anyway. So Appelstan is going to the temple of Uppsala. We can have more sons. 
Have we not tried? Plus, they've tried to have more sons. I mean, yeah, I was thinking that Ragnar would be questioning the gods. Damn, beautiful shot. A lot of those in this show. That's up, Sutter. Okay. Thor's hammer. All. Damn. Almost like he could sense something there, Athelstan. Father, I have come to ask for your love. I want you near me. Oh. Oh, he's got that cross. Is it true that I shall have more sons? Like Darcius says, accept the sacrifice I plan to offer you. Accept the sacrifice that I'm going to offer you. I hope How things don't get now? really bad between Lagatha and Ragnar after this. Yes. When is the food ready, Helga? Oh, that I'm look. Hungry. That look. You're always hungry. Of course I am. So when do we offer our sacrifices? No, the festival. And in the meantime, we celebrate the gods and enjoy their presence in any way we can. Is Ragnar's sacrifice Athelstan? I bloody hope not, because that look there, and even now. I like Athelstan. Mother, you came here before? I like that we're getting a lot from Athelstan's perspective here, because it's all new to him. All of this is brand new. What is this? And nine goats and nine pigs. There's nine of everything. Yes. Nine of every kind. And for the humans that have been chosen. Yeah, he's chose Applestan. It's you can just see it. Ah oh, shit. Eat this. <laughs> oh dear. Alright, he's gonna start seeing shit. <laughs> Floki's laugh. <laughs> yeah, so it seems like they like each other with those looks. King Horik himself may attend the festival. King Horik, we might meet King Horik. I desire to meet him. Can't wait to meet him. I mean, so ultimately, you know, they've been trying and nothing's happened. Like I said, I hope nothing bad happens between those two, Lagatha and Ragnar, but it's not looking too good at the minute. But yeah, this is some experience for Athelstan. Once again, like I've said, I love the fact that we're seeing a lot of this from his perspective. Is this why, like I've said, stay and don't go out there? Because, you know, they, they've been trying, nothing's happening, and Ragnar wants sons. Man, they've done a good job with this scene. This is real trippy. Alright, so this is Elton and Siggy's daughter. Oh, she likes Apple Stan. Jesus Christ, what the hell are you doing? Fools, this is King Horik. What the fuck? This is King Horik? Damn! Holy shit. Okay. Ah, you must be Ragnar Lothbrok. I can hardly believe my eyes that you are standing right here in front of me. The great please, Ragnar. Please. I'm not satisfied with what I have achieved so far. There's a kingdom called Frankia. A kingdom far larger, far richer, and far more powerful than England. Come. Of course, Ragnar isn't satisfied. Very ambitious. This man has seen it. And are you still a Christian? No. Well, we still. Share your appetite for as his little cross around his Lord wrist. Lord. Still holding on. Join. Right, so King Horik is going to go along with Ragnar. Looks like there's going to be huge Ragnar. battle scenes going forward. How many women have you been with? Quite a lot. By the looks of it. I don't. If you really want to be a great man, should you not be meeting with King Horik now? 
Well, that's where your brother is now. No doubt he's already boasting about how he sailed west alone and all he has achieved alone. Oh no, Siggy. If you weren't so stubborn and so drunk. Would you be prepared to travel to Yotaland as my emissary? I shall be forever in your debt. Right. So help him in what Yotaland with this Yarl and King Horik's forever in your debt. I guess that's where the next episode after this is going then. Yotaland. Are you still in your heart a Christian? Well, he sent something. You've been brought here as a sacrifice to the gods. Don't go there. Don't sacrifice him, please. Oh, there we go. The cross he's holding on to. We saw it earlier. It was so fast, but he's been holding on to that. I have come to tell you that the sacrifice of this man will not please the gods. Looks like your god finally came through for you. Instead, I guess so. You must agree to take his place tomorrow at the sacrifice. Oh shit. So someone has to take his place. No! Loki, you stay. Oh shit. Who else can claim this honor, a desire to be sacrificed? For the sake of all of you. For the sake of all humans in Midgard. Right, so we're saying goodbye to Leif this episode then. It's been a really interesting one this episode. Nine of each kind sacrificed. Holy shit, this last part of the episode. We saw what Appleston was like before when he saw sacrifices. That was one. Now he's witnessing many. Nine of each kind. It's a lot. Man, the way he stood up in that scene and was like, you know, I'll be sacrificed. Yeah, it was him who originally was going to let like, you know, I'm standing up. But. Leif was like, nope, it's gonna be me. Shit, man. And the cinematography and the music and everything on this part of the episode. And that's so quiet. Ah. That last part of the episode, that ending of that episode, that was so well done. But we said goodbye to Leif. He stood up like a man. He was like, I'll be the sacrifice. And it'll be an honour. I had a suspicion early on in this episode, just by the looks that Ragnar was giving Athelstan, that Athelstan was going to be Ragnar's sacrifice. And I had a feeling going into this episode that there'll be questions to the gods, you know, from Ragnar losing his unborn son, him and Lagatha's unborn son. But I don't think it would be an episode, you know, based around all of that, like um, going to Uppsala and stuff, standing by all the gods. It's a really interesting one. I mean... The way we saw it through Athelstan's perspective, like, a lot of it was him. And because, yeah, I don't know too much about it, you're with him on that journey there, you know? Fantastic episode, no doubt, but that ending just, yeah, I'm stuck on that. It's so well done. Now, we met King Horik in this episode. At first, I was like, who the hell is this guy? The way he's acting, I did not expect it to be King Horik, but, yeah, I guess he's... He's a personality, that one. He's asked Ragnar to go with him and get this Jarl, right? 
So if Ragnar helps him do that, King Horik will forever be in Ragnar's debt. So Ragnar will sell west with King Horik. And uh, yeah, a lot more men. I'm expecting big battle scenes. Because I think next episode's just the season one finale. Season Episode nine. Yeah, episode nine, season one. That's the last episode of the season. So season two. And that's where shit will go down. Now we also got scenes between Rolo and Siggy in this episode. And the way that Siggy was talking to Rolo. Kind of stirring the pot. And um, kind of how she used to talk to her ex-husband. I'm wondering where that's going to go. Because Rolo was like, I'll do what the hell I want here. And she just brought up that Ragnar is meeting with King Horik. And she was stirring the pot there being like, I bet he's telling King Horik how he's done everything by himself. And it's like, damn. Damn. You're really stirring the pot there, aren't you? There's already that tension between Ragnar and Rolo that I keep mentioning. And now Siggy, <laughs> she's just, she's taking that and she's planting things in Rolo's head. And that is exactly what she was doing to Earl Hilton. She was telling him that they can't trust no one in those scenes. And how um, it's them two versus everyone. Kind of like, that was the kind of the conversation. Or what she was telling him. She's doing the same with Rolo here, I'm noticing. So yeah, wonder what that's going to turn into. There's going to be a big fight between Rolo and Ragnar. Rolo has these big plans. He wants to become Earl. He's mentioned that, right? And he said in this episode he's going to be a great man. So he has these plans. He's He's got these ideas in his head. So the next episode being the finale of season one, I guess we'll have Ragnar go with King Horik. There's that stuff of a land there, so he'll help him. And then uh, season two, now King Horik and his men go west with Ragnar. Um, to be honest, that could even be the end of the next episode. Could be the end of the next episode, but I'm betting season two. That's where we'll see that. So those are my quick thoughts coming out of this episode. That ending, that was powerful. That was a powerful ending. I absolutely loved it. But yeah, um, goodbye Leif. So that was season one, episode seven of Vikings titled Sacrifice. Hope you enjoyed the reaction. And as always, cheers for watching.